it is our desire that you relax a little more and try to accept a little more the worthiness the deservability of you we want you to stop acknowledging who you are on the basis of how things have been in other words if you would like to have a lot of money and by that we mean the freedom to do what you want to do financially we would like you to begin pronouncing yourself financially secure now we want you to base it on where you're going not on where you've been the thing that's a little tricky about that is that where you've been you've been looking you've been observing where you've been only then it was where you were sort of like where you are and there's a tendency to pay such attention to what is around me so if my checkbook says I don't have enough money to pay my rent then I accept that reality and I begin to beat a drum that says this is who I am this is who I am this is who I am or at least this is who I am financially this is who I am financially and so what we're wanting you to understand is that who you am is about how you feel but if you're letting what is be the basis of how you feel then what is is who you am <laughs> transcriber has a hard time with us she doesn't know whether to type it as we've said it or as we should have said it so what is is the byproduct of how you've been feeling and what you've been thinking but what is coming is the byproduct of what you're doing about all of that now and so when we say to you that your powerful present is everything that all of your power is here and now what we're saying to you is you have the ability the capacity to offer a vibration now that is different from how you've been offering it if you know you do now there are a lot of people that are just we love you dearly lazy <laughs> and by that we mean rather than making the effort to think a thought that feels differently you just think the thought that feels normal or usual and then nothing much changes in your experience and we want to be kind to you by saying we want you to let yourself off the hook a little bit by acknowledging that law of attraction is in on that in other words it's logical that you would think thoughts sort of like the thoughts that you've been thinking because the thoughts that you have been thinking are attractive in nature and so things that match the thoughts that you've been thinking are surrounding you so it's normal that you think a thought the thought responds the thought comes back to you in manifestational form you observe what manifests and then you begin speaking reality this is how it is you say sometimes you say oh my goodness I thought that and then it happened and we say you get what you think about whether you want it or not what you observe what you remember what you reminisce what you ponder what you imagine what you speak about whether you are contemplating past present or future wherever you are giving your attention is generating a vibration that law of attraction is matching so sometimes our physical friends will say to us Abraham I have to give this my attention because it is true it is a reality it's the way that it is and we say we see no logic in that but as physical humans you really are caught up in the idea of your physicalness your physicality this stuff that's manifesting around you feels like the main event to you we know it does and so when something is manifested you say well there it is let's document it historically let's make it a statistic and let's talk about it never endedly and let's build monuments about it and let's make sure that our children and their children and their children who had nothing to do with this event who weren't part of it in any way let's make sure that they never ever 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 forget let's keep it active in their vibration and we say let's not <laughs> why take something that was not enjoyed by those who lived it and continue to carry it forward into generation after generation when you understand vibration you don't do that when you 
understand vibration, you look in your now for things that make you feel good when you see them because you understand that when you look at something in your now that pleases you, you activate it and you're going to get more of it. When you understand the power of vibration and you're looking in your past, you don't look for the whole collage, you don't look for the big picture, you don't look for every single event, you don't try to present a balanced view. You look into your past for those things that you love the very most and as you focus upon them, they keep repeating themselves into your now and into your future, but you don't replicate the stuff you don't want. You're too smart for that. Why drag around stuff you do not want? Because it is some reality. That's like saying, I see that person focused upon that terrible thing that he did not want long enough that he created it in his reality. And because he created it in his reality, I think I should do that too. And we say, why would you do that? We know the answer. The only reason that anyone would do that is because you don't know what you're doing. You would never do it on purpose. You would never say, oh, my friend has cancer. Let me see if I can figure out how to get some too. You would never say, oh, my friend is in a terrible relationship. Let me talk to her every day until she brings me to the place of feeling like she feels so that I can recreate that misery in my own experience. <laughs> you don't say that. What you say is, I need to be there for her. And we say, what you really want to do is go with the flow. You want to go with the flow of well-being. You don't want to get out of step just because somebody else got out of sync with well-being, you see. So how do you know when you're in the flow of well-being and how do you know when you're stepping out of it a little bit or how do you know when you're hindering it or disallowing it? You can tell by the way you feel. You have this emotional guidance system that is so accurate, so sophisticated, so loving of you, so helpful. Jerry and Esther have a a sort of guidance system, not nearly as wonderful as the one all of you are born with in their vehicles. It is called Magellan. And Magellan calculates the route and gives them verbal and visual description of how to get from where they are to where they want to be. They just program in the address and then Magellan talks to them. Go this way, go this way. Magellan never, ever, ever, ever has said to them, where have you been? <laughs> because it is irrelevant to the task at hand. The task at hand is, where are you in relationship to where you want to be? That's all that matters. And your own guidance system is the same way. Magellan never says to Jerry and Esther, you asked me, I told you, you didn't listen, now I'm done with you. <laughs> and your own guidance system is the same way. Your own guidance system is always there, fresh, and willing to assist you from where you are to where you want to be. But you gotta listen and you gotta know how your guidance system is talking to you. Magellan, Jerry and Esther, sometimes they will program her. It is a woman's voice. The man's voice was far too bossy. <laughs> Jerry and Esther will program Magellan and then they will get another idea. And rather than take the time to reprogram her, they will just go the way they've decided to go and try to ignore her. But she is relentless. She says, please return to the highlighted route. Please return to the highlighted route. She does not raise her voice. She does not get louder, but she continues to say, please return to the highlighted route. Please return to the highlighted route. Please return to the highlighted route. The highlighted route. You said you wanted to go there. You are not going in the way that I recommend. Please return to the way I recommend. Please return to the way I recommend. Jerry will say, shut that broad up. <laughs> if they continue to ignore her, eventually she will conclude that you're serious about your new divergence. And she will say, recalculating route. This is the point where your mother would say, you asked me, I told you, now don't ask me anymore. But Magellan says, given your new location and keeping in mind your determination to still get to where you want to be, this is what I now suggest. And your own guidance system is the same way. Always responding to where you are now and always leading you to the path of least resistance to that which you are seeking. 
path of least resistance and path of most allowance are the same path. In other words, this is the best route for now. Well, how do you know if you're on your path? How can you tell? Magellan, it's obvious. She speaks right up. But many of you do not know that you have a Magellan or an Abraham in your ear. And so, how do you know? And we say, you can tell by the way you feel. When you're on your path, it feels like ease. It feels like joy. It feels like adventure. It feels like exhilaration. It feels interesting. It feels exciting. It feels soothing. When you're off your path, it feels irritating. It feels aggravating. It feels overwhelming. It feels frustrating. It feels fearful. It feels angry. It feels suffocating. In other words, you can tell when you are on your path and when you are not. Now we want to give you something here that many of you may not be aware of. We want you to know that this is not a straight and narrow path. This is a wide and yielding, friendly, moving about, delicious path. There are so many paths that you could take to where you want to go. And there's not only one enjoyable path either. There are so many paths of excitement and adventure. In fact, some of you so much like adventure and excitement. You so much want to be alive that you don't even want the shortest path. You don't even want the easiest path. You want the most exhilarating path. You want the most adventurous path. That's why you cannot guide one another about your paths. That's why nobody can write a book. Not even a book called Bible. No one can write a book. No one can write a process. No one can tell you the way to go. You have your own internal guidance system that is taking into consideration who you are, who you were before you were born, who you are as non-physical energy, who you are in this physical body, who you are in relationship to your environment, who you are in relationship to all things you want. Your guidance system knows who you are and adores you and is lovingly saying to you, given everything I know about you, which is everything, given everything I know about you, if I were standing in your physical shoes, I would go this way. Why don't you try it and see how it feels? So, if you will make a decision to follow what feels good, you will be on your path and it will be an extraordinary path. It will fulfill you in every possible way. We want you to understand that your path is not about this path that leads you to some place you want to be. It does do that, but that's not what the path is about. The path is about how fun it is to be on the path, how fun it is to be on the path, how fun it is to be on the path. In other words, you never get there because as soon as you get to where you thought you were headed, even before you get to where you thought you were headed, the path lengthens, it expands, you never get there. Jerry and Esther were in Maui a few years ago. They've been there many times since, but on this particular occasion, they were on their way to Mama's restaurant, a fabulous restaurant on the other side of the island. And off they went. They knew where they were going. They'd been there before. And in the sky was the most incredible rainbow they had ever seen. So vivid in color. And Jerry said, Mama's is over there somewhere near the end of that rainbow. As they followed the rainbow, it continued to move along with them. It continued to move, it continued to move, it continued to move, it continued to move. It led them right to the road that turned off to Mama's restaurant. And then the rainbow dipped right into the ocean, right at the spot. And Jerry said, well, look at that. The rainbow has led us to Mama's. But when they got to Mama's, the rainbow led them someplace else. In other words, this rainbow is like your eternally expanding path. As soon as you get even close to where you think you were going, you not only get the benefit of what you were reaching for, but you get an expanded reach. And so we want you to start enjoying the fact that you will never get there. We would like you to start enjoying the fact that you are, we are, you are, we are eternally incomplete. We will never get it done and you cannot get it wrong. And the reason you can't get it wrong is because it's never done. So no matter how incomplete or unfulfilling or unrewarding or off track it may feel in any moment in time, because it isn't finished and because so much power is in your now, do you know that everything that you've ever lived does not even come close if you added it all together 
to the power of your now.